What's up guys? It's eight o'clock and I am making my way upstairs and going to bed. And I thought I would share with you guys why I love this life flow so much of intermittent fasting and going to bed earlier. Like I literally like cannot wait <laughs> most days. Oh, hold on, there's light coming. Um, until eight o'clock because that's like my tick. That's like my time. It's like, all right, time to start heading up to my room. I go take some melatonin, magnesium. I also take niacin, slow release niacin at night. Um, for me personally, you don't need to take that. <laughs> if you have elevated lipoprotein A, you might want to consider that. It's like a genetic thing. But anyway, that's besides the point. This is why I love this life flow so much because First of all, like I, so intermittent fasting, like I'm not super picky about the morning. I kind of just wait till I get hungry. It's usually around like maybe 11 o'clock. And then I usually stop eating by like six at the latest, but I think today it was like 4.30. So like the reason, so like right now it's eight, I'm like mildly hungry, a little bit hungry, right? And if I didn't go to bed early, I'd probably be like wanting to snack on stuff. But it's like, this is like the perfect spot. Like you're just like a little teeny bit hungry and it's like mm, game over, day's over, just go to bed. So I get to bed, I'm usually asleep by about nine, right? So I kind of like do my little routine and like get slow. I've got some books over there, right? My little tarot cards if I'm feeling like it. <laughs> Whatever I feel like doing, just like slow. And I've got these um candles in my room that are really nice, but I don't need them right now because it's like clearly still light outside. But like when it's darker, I like to do these little remote control candles. You can get them on Amazon for like super cheap and like bring everything down, right? Because if we lived in nature, that's, you would go to bed so, so much earlier. Like when you're camping and stuff, I bet you don't stay up till one o'clock in the morning unless you're really partying, right? <laughs> like it's like that nature will bring you down. So I'm trying to create that environment here in my house. So today I stopped eating probably like 4:30 ish because I took it down <laughs> in the middle of the day today. I just I don't I eat a lot. I eat a lot. Like my whenever I'm with people on trips and stuff, they're always like, "Holy shit, you can take it down!" I'm like, "Yes, I can," but I take it down like in the middle of the day. You know what I mean? So it's usually you know sometimes a little earlier, but usually between maybe 10 at the earliest, maybe 11, and then it's just like this huge feasting window. Like whatever I freaking want, whenever I freaking want. Until maybe six, you know, it's kind of typical, but today was a little earlier because I just went pretty ham and so I was really full around like 4.30 and so I'm just done, right? And so when I get to this spot about eight o'clock and I start going to bed and letting myself come down, I get to bed early, get up early, do my morning routine with meditation. Um, I'm doing Tony Child's personal development right now. I do my own personal development after that. His is just on, I, I just wanted to focus on vision right now because I got some cool stuff coming in my biz. Um, so anyway, I do my little morning routine and then I go to the gym and I freaking crush it. Freaking crush it. And now I don't eat before the gym. I take pre-workout. So I do have a definite caffeinated boost before I work out. But like that flow of doing that is probably why I'm able to maintain, like stay lean and strong without having to like track all my food and all that stuff. And when I do eat in that window, I'm very focused on like nutrient, it's like nutrient feasting is what I like to call it. Getting lots of protein in, lots of whole foods. You know, I have my little treats here and there, like my built bars or my keto cereals or stuff like that. You know, it's not uncommon. Maybe some almond crackers and hummus is like, you know, a treat for me. Today I had like sourdough with avocado on it, which was like, you know, just like a total indulgence, I guess, but it's like super nutritious. What's up, Mel? Uh, yeah, good morning over in Australia. How's tomorrow? <laughs> um, so no, pre-workouts do not break your fast. Pre-workouts generally have no calories in them. In fact, it's like totally the opposite because if they're caffeinated, it's going to help you um, mobilize fat so that you're using it more in your workout plus the energy boost. So you're going to crush it, right? So that's what I do. Oh, from Peru. Hola. Bienvenidos. <laughs> awesome. Saben que hablo español? Did you guys know that I speak Spanish? I have a degree in Spanish. Yeah, I was going to be a Spanish teacher. So, bienvenidos. <laughs> um, my Spanish sucks now, though. <laughs> so, that's all we're getting. <laughs> so, anyway, that's how, this is my flow. I love it. And when you start going to bed earlier like this, 
You won't eat all this crap at night and then have it sitting in your body. First of all, from a body composition perspective, like you're not going to be using many of those calories. Then you energize yourself because food is energy. So then you don't want to go to sleep. So now you're like more awake. And third, the biggest, most important thing is your body can't properly repair itself because it's busy digesting food. Huge. I bet that will take years off your life. I, I kid you not. Because sleep is like when all the repair happens in your body. So I want to go into it just a little bit hungry. A lot of times I'm not because I'm used to this now. But man, if you try intermittent fasting with this flow, and it makes it really easy when you work out and you have caffeine because both of those are an appetite suppressant. If you can handle caffeine, I'm a fast metabolizer of caffeine, so I have no issues with caffeine, right? But man, even exercise is an appetite suppressant. So it makes that intermittent fasting really easy. I'm not just sitting there like at my desk like, like, man, I'm hungry and I wish I could eat. It's not like I'm just waiting to get hungry. And then I just feast like all throughout the middle of the day, cut it off, let my body start to come down, go to sleep early, wake up, power freaking hour or two before I go to the gym and then crush it, come home, wait till I get hungry, work. You see that flow? It's so easy. So <laughs> no tengo acento cuando hablo español. I do, but thank you for being so nice. <laughs> Let's see. Questions. What pre-workout do I take? Well, it depends if I'm being clean Tara or bodybuilder Tara. <laughs> clean Tara. <laughs> if you guys are, you know, um, uh, what would I call it? Ingredient picky type people. The clean pre-workouts that I like are one is called, um, honey badger and it's all stevia. You know, there's links on my webpage on this. If you guys want discounts, honey badger or, um, what's it called? Legion. Those are both like stevia, you know, really clean ingredients. If I'm being bodybuilder motor, I use bucked up cause it works really well, but it has sucralose and like food coloring and stuff like that. <laughs> But it freaking works. It freaking works. Um, all right. Uh, I'm not a super like, I'm not, I, I, I'm not convinced that sucralose will kill you. Like a lot of people in my community are. So that's just my thoughts on that. Cause in all of the research studies I've looked at, I'm just not convinced. <laughs> One of them was literally spiked with maltodextrin and they were saying that sucralose spikes blood, blood sugar. And they added maltodextrin, which is sugar, <laughs> to the sucralose. I was like reading the fine details of the study. I was like, they freaking lied. So anyway, <laughs> Lindsay, I love sucralose. Yep. And Lindsay's like your whey protein with transform the trainer, Lindsay one, it has sucralose, but holy shit, it tastes so much better than like stevia sweetened whey proteins. It's so good. Lindsay knows I'm obsessed with her creme brulee flavored whey protein. So that's just me. I don't know. I, very open. You guys know I love like natural and pure and all those things, but I also don't like buy into fear promoting stuff unless I'm really convinced that I actually need to be afraid of it. So um, yeah, that's just how I roll. But um, good to see you by the way, Lindsay. So yeah, that's it. Wake up, go to bed early, go to bed early, try it. I like, since I've gotten in this flow, I wake up like ecstatically happy. Like, it's really weird. It has blown my mind. And my alarm will be for five, but I almost always, if I'm asleep by nine, like, I, like it's like my, my I have these times because they just kind of help me, like, stay in my flow. So, like, nine o'clock is, like, lights out and I'm laying there going to sleep, right? And if I stay in that flow, I usually will wake up about, like, 4.40. I'll wake up right before my alarm. And I'm, like, I feel, like, exuberantly happy, it is insane. I'm like, whoa, I think this is how we're supposed to feel, right? Because if we lived in nature, that's probably the flow that we'd be in. We'd be asleep around like nine or so, you know, without all these stimuli keeping us awake later. So if, it, if you're on East Coast, you got to stop listening to me. Go sleep. <laughs> but like, and also just, I can't emphasize that enough. If you're eating right before bed, it's not like it's bad. I don't like any good, bad thinking at all. Just letting you know though, like we have some seriously compelling circadian rhythm research now. For, by the way, Sachin Panda, the main researcher on circadian rhythm that talked about this intermittent fasting study. Have you guys heard about this? He's, he's going to be at Metabolic Health Summit speaking. So I get to hear him on Sunday. I can't wait. I'm obsessed with his work. If you don't know, what he did was they did an intermittent fasting study basically and how it impacts circadian rhythm. So they had half of, I can't remember if it was mice or rats, but they had half of them 
um, eat the eat it just in a certain amount of time, like a time restriction, like intermittent fast basically. And the other ones could eat whenever they want. And the ones that could eat whenever they want had like all of these diseases and metabolic issues. And the ones that were in the time restricted eating window had zero, all super healthy body weight. And so anyway, it's really interesting for me. It's been like awesome, 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 awesome. And it's just, I don't know. It just feels like a lot of freedom. It doesn't even feel hard anymore. It's just like, I just go crush it. I'm just not hungry because I just crushed a workout. So like, you know, that appetite suppressant effect you get when you work out really hard. I just wait for my body to get hungry, eat like a freaking beast all day. Just, just hunt for nutrients, lots of protein, lots of whole foods, healthy fats, healthy carbs, cut it off. Like, what would be early dinner time, right? Anywhere between like four and 6 p.m. And then I go to bed, start going to bed at eight so that I can't, I'm not staying up late enough for me to get like super hungry again. And then that helps me wake up early before the rest of the world and I'm crushing life and like meditating and having this like time to myself. Even when my kids are here, I do this. So right now I don't have my kids at their dad's house. I have them every other week, but like, even when I have them, they're like, seriously, eight o'clock. I'm like, I don't care what you do. We're just all going upstairs in our rooms. <laughs> and I like my house that I have right now. Cause like all of my kids are down that hallway. We have five bedrooms up here. Right. So they're just, we're just all up here. We're just like slowly winding down. That's kind of why I give it that hour because when I have my kids, it's like, you know how it is. They come in. Oh mom, I wanted to tell you this. And I want to have time for that, you know? So I give it like an hour and then by nine and I let them know I'm like nine o'clock. I'm like lights out, you know? And it's, it's been good for all of us. And because I'm in here in my bed, a lot of times my younger two, my nine and 11 year old, they, they, they want time with me. They don't want to go to bed either. Right. So they'll come in and like read to me and stuff like that. It's just been so good for our whole family. Um, been fasting for almost three years and it helped me shred and felt energized. But for the last six months I felt sluggish. My body is not as shredded. Maybe I need to change my fasting window possibly. And the other thing I would be mindful of is not over fasting. Um, I was just on Dr. Pompa's podcast. I don't know when it's going to come out, but he just interviewed me a couple days ago and we talked about this because Dr. Pompa is like the fasting guy, right? But he was, he's like, I'm really getting concerned now about too much fasting. <laughs> like fasting is really good. Too much fasting, too much of a stressor on the body, right? So especially for those of you who are doing all these extended fasts, you know, uh, 36, 48, 72 hour fasts all the time, you can overdo it. It's just like training, right? Like the stress of weightlifting is really good for your body. Too much stress is never good for the body. And too much fasting is too much stress on the body, especially the female body, which is very delicate. Yes, as strong as we are, we're very complex, right? We have these hormones that change every single month, like every day. We're like a different person <laughs> hormonally, right? And so that like think about the complexity of the the female body especially us guys we have to be mindful of that do not overstress your body one of the biggest problems i see with women today in health is being way too hard on themselves with over restriction of food like exercising themselves into the ground like that is how you are going to get hypothyroidism adrenal adrenal fatigue is kind of a loose term but adrenal issues um poor hpa axis dysfunction which is basically hypothyroidism meaning your adrenals and your brain and your all like your hormones get messed up from overstressing your body okay so don't push yourself too hard be gentle and loving yeah emily way too hard yes most of the work that I have to do is it's like, I feel like I'm like Aladdin. You guys know when Aladdin is like <laughs> on the carpet and like, um, he's like, do you trust me? And like Jasmine thinks she has to like jump off. <laughs> That's what I feel like I'm like with my clients. I'm like, do you trust me? Cause you're driving yourself into the freaking ground here. And I know it's going to be scary for you to let go of that, but I promise things are going to get so much easier as you can lean into being more gentle and loving with your body and listening to what it needs and food is not the enemy and you don't have to drive yourself into the ground when you're freaking exhausted. That is not the way. Okay. So if I would, if I were to wake up tomorrow and I felt under recovered, just like bleh, zombie brain, I would still go to the gym, but I would just walk. Right. That is smart. That is not lazy. That is smart. Let your body recover. So you actually get gains, you actually have good hormone function. <laughs> and then when you feel good again, you can go be beast mode and crush it. You know what I mean? So anyway, um, after menopause, fasting is hard on our bodies, 
even 16 a it can be and it depends on the person and i would really check out the work of um dr mindy pells on that she's like basically those are her two specialties is menopause and fasting she's awesome she's on my podcast too inside out health podcast it's mindy pells p-e-l-z anybody who is going through menopause or post you know after menopause check out the work of mindy because she talks about this this exact thing fasting and menopause so She's kind of the expert on that. So anyway, um, for the rest of you, like, it's like, remember if you're going to try intermittent fasting or anything, it's, it's gradual adaptation, right? So like, don't beat yourself into the ground. I once had to stop a 72 hour fast because I wasn't making any ketones. I was going through a lot of life stress at that time. And I called my friend, Sean Wells. Some of you might know Sean Wells. He's like super amazing expert in nutrition and especially keto. He's probably one of the longest keto experts that we have in the biz. And I called him. I'm like, dude, Sean, I'm not making any ketones. I'm like 48 hours into this fast. Like, what do you think is going on? He, he just goes, stop fasting. <laughs> I was like, K, <"Kay." laughs> you know? It was just whatever was going on in my body. I know what was going on. I was going through tremendous life stress at that time. It was just too much stress on my body. My body was like, stop, man. <laughs> stop. Stop. Are you listening? I was feeling weird, too. I was not feeling that that normal like high that you get when you fast for a long time. Yeah, it was 48 hours. And I've done a 72-hour fast before. And I used to do 36-hour fast like a lot. Because when you're keto, it becomes kind of easy to do that. It's like a lot easier than you would think, but I've stopped doing that. And I actually, I haven't done any extended fast in a long time. I feel like I'm maintaining all the benefits that I need from intermittent fasting and exercising inside my fasted window. So that's just where I'm at right now. I love my life flow and I feel energized and great and happy and it's effortless. And so that's why I made this live to share this with you guys before I go to bed. So in a nutshell, if you haven't tried it, intermittent fasting, eat whatever the freak you want, but make it like healthy, like be, we have like very childlike mentalities towards food. I have found it's like, what can I get away with? And like, it's just, it's, it's like, it's not, um, looking at our bodies for like what they are and what they need. Like our bodies need nutrients. It's okay to enjoy whatever you want to, you can have whatever you freaking want, but like be mindful of this like incredible vehicle that you are the steward over. You know what I mean? And on that note, when you have like healthy cravings, like you're like, man, I just really want a steak or sweet potatoes or like whatever. Just freaking eat. Oh my gosh. So much of like what I feel like I've been learning by building a relationship with my body is um, like, <laughs> I don't know how to say it. I'm going to sound like a weirdo. I am. I guess I'm kind of a weirdo, but like, I feel like our bodies are so intelligent and we don't even know how they work. Spo surprise. In case you didn't know that nobody on the planet knows how the body works. We, we, we know this, right? Okay. We're like in junior kindergarten on the gut microbiome and like even the immune system and all sorts of things. <laughs> even like, you know, I, one of my huge focuses is neurotransmitters. And like lately it's like, actually we think dopamine might be a hormone and a neurotransmitter. I mean, it's like always changing what we know about the body, but the body itself is so freaking intelligent. If we will start to listen to what it's telling us, I feel like this is what I was going to say. I feel like my body is just like patting me on the shoulder, like, we got it. Just listen. <laughs> like, if you'll just listen, like we got it. You know what I mean? Your body is sending you messages all the time. So like, what if your body is saying, I'm really freaking tired all the time? Well, if you're being the dummy that's shaming it, like, ugh, ugh, like shaming being tired, just listen to it. Just rest more, sleep more, recover, like listen to it. It's just trying to help you feel better. Our bodies are fighting for us so hard and they're trying, they're sent, it's sending us messages all the time. Like you need more sleep. You need more, I don't know what it's telling you, yoga or nutrients or whatever. Please stop drinking so much, please. It's really freaking hurts my stomach. Like whatever it's telling you, if you'll listen to it, if you can listen to it, it's just trying to help you. Okay, so... Um, let's see. What do we got here? Oh, you guys are saying hi to each other over in Australia. <laughs> That's awesome. 
I've been trying to do an Australian accent with my kids because we do accents a lot. That one's hard. That one's hard. And I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I don't have it down. Don't. I have two Australian clients right now. You'd think I'd have it down, but I don't. Um, I can easily fast, but when I eat, I have a hard time not overeating. Well, it just depends on what you think overeating is. I call it, I'm hungry. <laughs> and if it is overeating to the point of like, you're getting physically uncomfortable, like your stomach is so full, it hurts and you keep eating. That is purely a result of a restrictive mindset around food. And you've gotten trapped into a mentality where it's like, I get, it's now or never kind of thing. And if you take off the restrictions, like I once had a lady I hope she's not, I hope, well, it's anonymous. I, I think it's okay. But she felt like she had binging. She, we did, this is when I used to just do like one-off consults with people. And she was like, yeah, she was carnivore. So like one of the most restrictive diets there is. And she's like, I'm having a problem with binging. And I'm like, okay, tell me about it. And her binging was like eating like four burger patties. And I, I told about her, I just started laughing. I was like, that's like normal. <laughs> I would just say I'm really hungry, you know? And I'm just sharing that with you because like, if you, if we can relax a little bit into just honoring our body's natural hunger signals and get out of this, I was talking to Dr. Pompa about this too. Like, I think it's possible that if you, if, if your body is hungry, but in your mind, you're saying, stop eating, stop eating, stop eating, stop eating. Is it possible that you could create like almost hormone signaling dysfunction with like leptin and ghrelin because you're eating the thing, but you're saying like, I can't have as much as I want to have, right? Like, could that disrupt satiety signals? I kind of wonder, you know? So anyway, I really, really important. Just let yourself freaking eat. But when you eat, be loving and kind to your body. And like, what do you need? Here you go. All kinds of good stuff. Right. And it's like, we've been swimming in this world of dogma and nutrition where it's like, this is bad and this is good. And this is bad. And this is good. Like knock it off. Like get out of that mindset and just start honoring your body with things that taste good to you that are nutritious and get the stupid, like ugh, bullshit out of your head. Like when I had this delicious sourdough today, it's like, what is it called? Like Amy's or something. They make it here in Utah and Spanish Fork. I can't remember. It's some girl's name, but it's like, it's got like three ingredients. It's like water, ye what is it? Like wheat, yeast, and I can't remember. It's like salt and water and maybe some honey or something. It's amazing. And I had avocado on it. What's wrong with that? It was freaking delicious. My son came over for a little bit after school, even though he was with his dad this week. And we had some delicious avocado toast together. And I enjoyed every second of it. Right? But I'm sure there's somebody out there that's going to tell you that'll kill you. It's not killing me. I feel fine. I'm not bloated. I'm not... <laughs> I enjoyed every second of it, you know, and I think if we will allow ourselves to enjoy our food, enjoy it and, and but look at it in a loving way. You know what I mean? Like I could have donuts and soda and all. I, of course I can have that, but, and there's no, there's no guilt around it. I just know, I just love and appreciate my body so much. Like I want it to have what it needs and what it can thrive and like make itself with and like all of my systems and my body to work well together. So that's my job is like kind of listen to how it's feeling based off the decisions I'm making and do my very best to give it everything it can and to like thrive and then just enjoy, you know, and not worry about it so much. And I do feel like intermittent fasting and sleeping, like really sleeping really makes that easy. So yeah, that's why I wanted to share this. So I hope that helps. All right. I am going to now like calm down so I can actually go to sleep in 30 minutes. Okay. <laughs> Bye guys.